Welcome to Front Runner Motorsport. The GP2 Championship was the top feeder series into Formula 1 from 2005 to 2016, before being replaced by Formula 2. Let's take a look at the GP2 champions and see what happened to their careers after winning the title. Remember to subscribe to the channel, I'd really love the support, and also leave a like and a comment. That being said, let's get started. 2005, Nico Rosberg. Yep, Nico Rosberg was the first champion, winning for ART. He'd joined Williams the very next year and spent four years floundering in the midfield before joining Mercedes. They weren't the dominant force they'd come to be, but he would take his first win in China in 2012. At the start of the hybrid era, he'd spent two years chasing Lewis Hamilton before finally beating him in 2016 and winning the Formula 1 championship and immediately retiring. He's now a Sky Pundit, giving completely impartial praise to Mercedes. 2006, Lewis Hamilton. Speaking of Lewis Hamilton, he also won with ART and would join McLaren the very next year. After nearly winning Formula 1 in his first year, he'd accomplish his goal in 2008, beating Felipe Massa. After not winning another title with McLaren, he'd join Mercedes in 2013 and would embark on another four titles and a second place. And let's be honest, probably another title this year. 2007, Timo Glock. Finally, someone who wasn't a world champion. Timo Glock actually made his Formula 1 debut in 2004, competing in four races for Jordan, scoring two points. But after winning GP2, he'd get a Toyota drive for 2008. And would even get a couple of podiums in 2009. After that, he'd joined the Virgin Marussia team, and after three years and no points, he left and joined the DTM series, where he races to this day. 2008, Giorgio Pantano. He also raced in Formula 1 prior to winning GP2. Actually, he raced in all but four races for Jordan in 2004, being replaced in the other four by Timo Glock. Unlike Timo Glock, Giorgio Pantano would not get a Formula 1 drive after winning GP2. He wouldn't do much, racing in Super League, AutoGP, a few indie races, and now manages his own karting team and works for ART Junior Team. 2009, Nico Hülkenberg. Nico Hülkenberg has won something at least, just not in Formula 1. He'd moved to Williams a year after winning GP2, and even start the Brazilian Grand Prix on pole. He'd take a year off after not securing a race seat for 2011, and then come back bouncing between Sauber and Force India before joining Renault, where he still is today. Still without a single podium in 170 races. 2010, Pasta Maldonado. The man who caused everyone else to look in their rearview mirrors just a little bit harder, for fear of being driven into, Pastor Maldonado won GP2 in 2010 and would join Williams for 2011. He'd somehow managed to win a race, also for Williams in 2012, before spending a final year at Williams and two years at Lotus Renault, driving into everybody on the grid. Since then, he has been racing in endurance for Dragon Speed, with the odd win here and there. 2011, Romain Grosjean. Raced for Renault in 2009, replacing PK Jr., but wouldn't impress and would bounce back by winning GP2 in 2011. It spent four years with Lotus F1 team getting 10 podiums before joining the new Haas team where he still races to this day. 2012, David Valsecchi. One of only two drivers to win GP2 without getting a Formula 1 drive. In fact, David would only get one test for Lotus Renault the year before winning GP2. Probably feeling very neglected, Valsecchi hasn't done much since racing in a few endurance races, punditry for Sky Sports, and appearing on Top Gear Italia. 2013, Fabio Lima. The other champion not to make it into Formula 1, apart from a couple of tests with Manor, no team would, would come calling for Fabio. And apart from winning the Ferrari Pirelli Trophy Challenge thing, he has now given up on racing altogether. He's only 30. 2014, Jolian Palmer. Jolian would make it to Formula 1, but it was a bit of a waste of time. A year and a half with Renault spent mostly spinning and not scoring points. He now works for BBC Radio and is actually surprisingly good at it. 2015, Stoffel van Dorn. 
another whose opportunity in Formula One was disappointing. Two years struggling with McLaren before being dumped with the hot new thing in Lando Norris. Stoffel has instead turned his attention to Formula E, scoring a podium in his debut season. 2016, Pierre Gasly. The final GP2 champion, winning for Prima. Red Bull wouldn't have a seat available straight away, so Pierre Gasly almost won Super Formula in 2017. He'd also make his Formula 1 debut for Toro Rosso in 2017, replacing Kvyat and Sainz as Toro Rosso played driver roulette. His first full year was decent with a fourth in Bahrain. He was moved to the Red Bull team for this year, but has spent his time pitting his potential up a tree. And that's the list. Remember to like, comment and subscribe. I am releasing content nearly every day and it is getting better. Thank you to those that have subscribed or left a comment. It's all really helpful, especially in terms of motivation. Anyway, have a good one.